Hello, my name is Hassani Mustafa, and I am screening my film Blunt at Milwaukee Shorts Fest. Blunt is a short film about an interracial LGBT couple that comes out to their very traditional parents and have to use a lot of direct conversation and a whole lot of weed to soften the generational divide. You showed a, a film at our festival last year, Hermanina? Yes, sir. And uh, it actually walked away with uh, a few awards. It did, it did. I, I proudly display them <laughs> just over here. And um, winning those were, was something that motivated me throughout the year. And I believe uh, winning a, an award at Milwaukee Shorts Fest is something people take notice of around the country because going into 2023, I've been able to garner some accomplishments I've never really been able to grab a hold of before. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I didn't know uh, we had such sway around the country. Oh, you uh, do. You do. With that, now Blunt, if I'm not mistaken, well, much like Hermanita and some of your other films, there's a there's a bit of, I'm not saying it, it's based on a true story, but elements are true. Correct. Inspired by true events. Yeah. Um. Most people draw from some sort of, you know, that old saying, write what you know. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I just, I write what makes me feel better about what's happened. Uh, so many situations in life uh, go unresolved and unresolved bothers me. I'm a guy who likes puzzles because I can complete them and put them aside and never have to worry about how they came apart or why they were so jumbled mm -hmm. and life is just not that clean. And the past leaves me with a bunch of unfinished puzzles and yeah. uh, Hermanita and Blunt are just um, examples of puzzles in life that I wasn't able to put together the way I wanted to at the time, but I could in this fictional universe. With, with Blunt, is playing during our Voices Heard selection on Friday night, uh, September 8th at the Avalon Theater. And um, I, I was very intrigued by the film, mostly, mostly due to discussions between the characters. Mm -hmm. um, how much was the discussions actually pulled from real life or did you m manufacture the dialogue to help flow the story? It's about 40% verbatim. Okay. And the rest is my brain making sense out of the scenario. Okay. Um, since I made Blunt, uh, the real life counterparts that this film was based on have become a, a family. Oh, okay. In a lot of different ways. Like I couldn't be more closer to these people. So there's a real life happy ending to this. But have the they time, seen the film? One of them has, and she oh. she she liked it. She thought it was funny. Oh, okay. Uh, so the uh, <laughs> other person hasn't. Well, there's two uh, two characters. Um, the ca character that Kate is based on helped me produce it, produce it. Okay. So there you go. And then the mom, and uh, from the film Blunt, the character uh, that the mom is based on, she's seen it. Uh -huh. and I was really happy with her response. Oh, okay. The father hasn't seen it then? No, uh, I've grown incredibly close with him since making this film. And he's a really wonderful guy. Just, I think you can kind of see that I instinctually thought he would be in the film uh -huh. because, because everyone has redeemable perspectives. Yeah. What is really about, if you talk things out, then you understand that nothing is as and nothing's really no one's a bad guy in the correct film. correct and i think that was an unexpected result of writing the script i didn't know that these characters in my head were going to make that much sense until yeah. i hit these points in writing where i didn't know what to say back because what these characters who i had beef with in real life just said to me in a fictional fictional world made so much sense that i couldn't retort mm-hmm specifically the mother character and, and the dad character was just so understandable yeah because you could have um easily in a in a situation like this most screenwriters probably would have made one of the parents the bad guy 
Mm-hmm. And you didn't. You you've you've made them human beings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. I tried to do that with everyone. I think the pace of it is the the kids have their say and they make their points, and then the parents um, take a little bit longer to express exactly what it is that bothered them about the scenario and that who the children are, their their personalities and how they identify was never the problem. Communication was the problem and societal barriers seem to be something that they take more serious than than we do or they res- they they have like a a respect for it that that we don't i think our generation sees most constructs as something we can change yeah and i think uh that uh the generation that the parents are from they accept that things are the this is the way things are and that could cause a lot of friction but well, the way, but just writing the script, I think it opened me up. Yeah, to listening to the real life counterparts so much more than I was able to develop a beautiful relationship with them. I might not agree with that so much because I'm more the parents' age. Yeah, I I kind of feel that not necessarily this is the way things are, and you can't really change it. But more of like we hope things can change, mm. but it's harder to change in some aspects because of society and institutions. And it's harder to, to plow, to plow through that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That's a better way to put it. That's an, that's essentially, I think I mean the same thing. So yeah. you just explained it way better than I could. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I, I am probably the <laughs> Um but I, you know, as, as someone who's Gen X, I, I look at Gen Z and Gen, you know, the the millennials as something of hope because in 15, 20 years, they're going to be running this place. Yeah. You yeah. know, and they're far more open minded than people my age and people after me are, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you can appreciate, like, the pandemic opened my eyes. Um, I'm a filmmaker, and for me, I have a very fun occupation, I'm, and, and writing is one of the most beautiful things I do. But there were so many beautiful young people on the streets protesting during the George Floyd and yeah. several other events. And, and I just looked at it and I was like, these kids that are just a little bit younger than I am are some of the, they're just brave. Like they are the bravest generation I've seen. Now don't get me wrong, your generation did their fair share of making a statement, you know, when it when it counted as well. But I didn't get to see that with my own eyes. Like these kids, they were out there putting their body on the line. And yeah, yeah, I have faith in them as well. Yeah, I do too. What are you hoping for the reaction to Blunt? You going to sit there with the audience and, and watch how they react to it? Yeah, I always go to the back of the theater. And I think I watched the crowd more than I watched the movie because I've, I've obviously seen it a bunch. Uh, I hope that I'll tell you some of my apprehensions. Uh, my apprehensions when making the film was that black people wouldn't like it so much because I was too empathetic of people who made mistakes and were racially insensitive. Um, when, and, and I would always hope that you know, black people and 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 other um, underrepresented communities. We see that the film wasn't about labeling uh, anyone as anything. It was about communicating and and seeing that the majority of our conflicts aren't because someone set out to hurt another person or are are an evil or bad person. It's because they didn't articulate things as clearly as they would have liked yeah. to, or we weren't listening as clearly as we would have liked to. And I wanted to just do something daring and do my first dialogue driven film and see if I can hold people's attention. So if, if I can get people to listen to one another a bit more and to catch the nuances of, of what everyone's saying and see the honesty in the film, I'll, I'll feel pretty accomplished. And, um, yeah I, it'll empower i think it'll uh, embolden me to write films that don't need as much spectacle 
if the crowd reacts the way I hope, which is just, you know, get a couple laughs, a lot of silence, and then maybe a great applause at the end. Thank you for submitting, Blunt. Thanks for taking it. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.